I want you to know that God loves you no matter the situation you may be in. Even before you were born, He knew your name. His plans for us are of good and not of disaster, and they are to give us a future and hope. You are destined for a purpose, and I pray you realize this vision for you as you hear this message. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is GRM. Gospel Revelation Ministry. I welcome you today to Gospel Revelation Ministry. My name is Inka Martins, our host of this podcast alongside Dami Adetula. Our mission here at GR Ministry is to spread the word of God and address worldly topics biblically. The ministry is founded by Pastor Joshua Ajewale. This message is ministered by Pastor Abel Ojo. We are welcome to the new month of uh, November, the 11th month of the year. We shall end the year happily, successfully, in Jesus' name. No evil shall befall us. We shall be well protected from the dangers and perils of the day or night. We shall not regret our journey of life. November is the month of awareness and remembrance. Awareness of diseases that can cut life short, like diabetes, epilepsy, etc. It is also the heritage month and finally a month of remembrance. God will remember us for good. In Jesus' mighty name, the Holy Spirit will give us awareness, empower us, strengthen us into His righteousness and keep us safe throughout. In Jesus' name. Thank God for the grace that we have. We shall continue in the series of our heavenly home. When you are renting an apartment or you are buying your dream home, after all the paperwork, you will be giving keys to your new apartment or your home. Allocating a house to you in the kingdom of God, you must possess your key. A man of God had a vision and saw himself in the kingdom of God and they showed him a plot of land which is in the foundation level. This man was like 82 years old. He woke up, he was sad. He has been serving the Lord all his life and at 82 years his house still in the foundation level. When will it be completed? When will it be ready? When will the key be ready for him? We have been allocated a house in the kingdom of God. Different fashions. Some just ordinary plot. Some construction midway. Some completed. Some furnished. And some got their plot of land in the river or the sea without any foundation. You are assured of your home when the keys are ready and you will be in control and you will inhabit your home. What are the keys to the kingdom of God? Keys to the kingdom of God is a concept of believers for the eternal church authority right from the time of the apostle paul in the first century and up to today being followed by other apostles which are called by various names pastors reverend 
evangelist, Dickens. Keys to the kingdom of God includes repentance, forgiveness, obedience, faith, love, standing in the word of the Lord, studying it, praying, and holiness living. There may be other versions. Some other theologians rank the keys in different ways. But all meet at the same point. To have the kingdom, to the, the key to the kingdom of God, you must know you are a sinner. Sin has various dimensions. The Bible says we have all sinned. And we have come short at the grace of the Lord. If you look at the book of Psalm, chapter 51, verses 1 to 6. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. King David acknowledged his sin. We must acknowledge that we are sinners. Either the imputed sin, either sin that are deliberately committed, sin of omission or commission, all the imputed sins, I know they have been cleaned by the blood of Jesus Christ. But we must acknowledge that we are sinners. In verse 2, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. And done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. For I was sharp in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Francis, we have to be honest and truthful to acknowledge our sin. Don't say you did nothing wrong. We all inherited the Adamic sin. And only the blood of Christ in our belief and faith, faith in him, will wipe off the sin. We must confess our sins. And repent from wrongdoings. We have a slang that the day a mentally sick patient understands the nature of his sickness is on the road to recovery. Some do not know they are sinners. Some do not understand they have sinned. No insight to the nature of sin. No sinner. We have the key to the kingdom of God. We must come clean of our shortcomings. We do not say uh, anyone, uh, and then uh, we say, well, we, 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 are, we are not sinners. I've not done. No, 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 no. We must acknowledge we have sinned. And Heavenly Father will give us the grace to repent and come into righteous living. Repentance is not a merely word of mouth, but a deep conviction, sincere regret, remorse of past or holy deeds or inherited ones, to be remorseful and be forgiven, to be saved and have the right to the kingdom of God. And following repentance, we have forgiveness. This is the act or process of being forgiven when we overstep our boundary and then we look back and we say sorry, we repent, then we are forgiven. It is only God that has the true forgiveness. He will wipe it out completely and will not visit it again. God has decided not to remember. He will forgive and forget. We should beg for forgiveness and ask to be forgiven. God knew all our wants, but we have to ask for it. 
There are many items, many things we do not know that we lack, which God had done for us without asking. Too many to mention. But forgiveness, we must ask for it. That is very specific. We must ask for it. That is, we must know that we lack and ask for it and we shall be forgiven. When you acknowledge your iniquity and ask for forgiveness, then you are given a clean slate. You open a fresh new page and no one can input iniquity onto you and Satan cannot make it a point of obstruction or acquisition or opposition unto you. Goodness and mercy shall be yours. Remember the book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. Satan accusing the high priest and putting on him a filthy, a filthy, a filthy rag. But God rebuked Satan for the high priest in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Satan is rebuked in our life. And he's not going to accuse us but the, because the, 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 the death of Christ has stopped him from all his accusations. That's why we should sin no more so that we will not have a point against us. We must be kind and be compassionate to one another. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 32, we must be kind, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave us. If we are in the act of unforgiveness, the door to the kingdom of God may be jammed completely and not opened. Forgive, even if the offender cared less. Forgive. If the offender doesn't really even really care, just forgive so that we shall be forgiven too. Our Lord's prayer says, forgive us our trespasses as we do forgive others. So if God will forgive us as we forgive our offenders, some will not have the forgiveness of God at all. Because they don't forgive completely. You don't forgive completely. When you say you're forgiving somebody, another few months, maybe that person has done something again to you. Say, uh-huh, that is what you did last year. That is what you did six months ago. I've been watching you. I know you will repeat it. You keep, like you are keeping a diary of who are offending you. Forgive and forget it. That is the spirit of God. That is the love of God. We must forgive and forget and move forward. God will give us the grace to be able to forgive others completely without looking back. Don't make references. Don't say, well, you did this one this time. You did that is what you did five years ago. This is what you did uh, three years ago. Now you are repeating it again. You can't, don't you put it on people. Somebody's doing this something to you. Even if he, he doesn't care. If he's not asking for God, just forgive him and go your way because you are laying your treasures in heaven. Heavenly Father will give us the grace to forgive others. And Christ will forgive us our sins. We shall be forgiven in Jesus' mighty name. Act of forgiveness will not allow many people to get to the kingdom of God. The third key is obedience. Obedience is described as compliance. Compliance with an order. In the monastic uh, system, there are three basic rules in order that people, they should follow. Vows not to look for richness. Vow not to look for money not to accumulate wealth, chastity, and strict obedience. We don't have many people going to monastery these days because all those rules, very few, very, very few people 
can abide with it. Many people can abide with it. Many cannot observe it. They're so strict. Those rules are strict. Those who are even uh, in the monastery, the fathers and the nuns, <laughs> we have so many stories of uh, what happens there. They need the grace of God. Pray for them. Pray for them. It's not easy to live a life of complete obedience to the Lord. It will not be difficult for us in Jesus' mighty name. It will not. Trust in God in obedience. The first sin of mankind is to is this disobedience. It made Adam and Eve to lose the beautiful garden of God. It is this disobedience that will make many, many to lose the key to the kingdom of God. We must be faithful to the core. We must trust God in all our undertakings without faith. We cannot please God. We cannot have the key to the eternity without your being faithful and trustworthy to get to the promised land, to get to the kingdom of God, to have the key to the kingdom of God. Obedience is very important. To have a life of blessing and rich inheritance we must obey the commandments of God. Every word, every command matters to God. As we put great value to the words of God in obedience, carefully consider and follow. In obedience, the, the word of God shows that we are grateful for the love of God. We give God the reverence, the honor, that is due him. Obedience is a very vital key to the kingdom of God. Disobedience destroyed Adam and Eve. It destroyed Cain. It robbed and prevented Moses to get to the promised land. And the worst thing in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 9, with all that Moses had done, with all his working, with all the mind miracles, with all the strength, with all the power, Satan was contending with the body of Moses in the kingdom. Satan wanted to take Moses unto him. And the angel of the Lord rebuked Satan for the body of uh, Moses. With all that Moses have, have done, if, uh, if uh, Satan could, could be in contest for the body, what of we? So, Heavenly Father, give us the grace to live in obedience. To live in obedience. Obey the rules, the words of the Lord and His commandments. And it will be well with us. Disobedience and the act of stubbornness destroys something. So many people that are disobedient. Saul was disobedient. His kingdom was torn away from him. We should obey. We should not disobey the Lord and his words. To have the kingdom of God, we must never being in disobedience. We should not. God will save us from the sin of disobedience. In Jesus' mighty name, we shall continue with the keys to the kingdom of God as we meet next time. You are blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible said in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world as gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Brethren, if you have not given your life to God, this is an invitation for you. 
to surrender your life to God. Confess your sin. Ask for forgiveness. And let Jesus Christ be your Lord and Savior. And you'll be saved. After you have confessed your sin, ask for forgiveness and take Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Speak to your pastor. Do your baptism, immersion baptism, and pray for the power of Holy Spirit to fall upon you and you will be a born again Christian. And you will be saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's message. If you'd like to learn more about this ministry, please visit grministry.org or call us on plus one six one seven four four nine zero six four six. To support this ministry, you can subscribe and follow our channel or give at grministry.org slash support. Stay blessed.